Prusha's producing piffled prints, Voron's vacating vicious victories, and fortuitous filament foul-ups. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 157. Let's get into it. Starting off with Discord member Saul Rectum. I hardly knew him. With his Prusha XL. Let's see what Saul has to say here. Not sure if this is worthy of a Print Fix Friday. It is. It's the first one of the episode. But I think this is where I can ask what's up. Yes, that's the Print Fix Friday Discord. Printing these and most of them are fine. Why a few misprints? XL with enclosure closed because printer is above an air vent. PLA with stock Prusha slicer settings plus stock brim. Let's take a look at what we got here. We got a pretty decently packed build plate of parts here on the XL. It looks like it could be Galaxy Black since it's PLA. It's a little bit shiny. It's either Galaxy Black or it's going to be the Soul Black Glitter from Printed Solid. Both good filaments. And hey, gotta love Printed Solid Made in America filament. We got a couple of them that just don't look great. And there's not exactly a good answer here, right? It looks like we might have skipped a step, but then it fixed itself maybe because it's only on a couple of the parts. We can see there's one, two, three. Well, it's actually on quite a few of them. My best guess here is there was a collision. The XL as it currently sits, if you are running Input Shaper, has its crash detection turned off. I believe that has to do with how fast the input shaper moves the machine, but it is what it is. It's just one of those things. So when the machine does crash, you as the user don't exactly know. And this one actually leaves me a bit puzzled. Some of them are very clearly on the top layer, like this failure, this failure, and the couple back there to me look like they're on the top layer. But this one specifically toward the bottom, that is on the layer below the top layer and the top layer is where it needs to be. It doesn't look good because the layer below it is a little bit messed up. Maybe this was caused by some bad extrusion, but why would it be kicked off and then it somehow fixed itself? If it ran into something that caused it to skip a step and then it ran into that exact same thing again and skipped the exact opposite number of steps, theoretically, but I guess I gotta pass it off to you guys. How the heck does this happen? Now I would say, that's a lot of pieces that succeeded. It looks like, what, maybe 5%, maybe 10% of them failed. And on a print like this, if you're printing multiple pieces on any printer, I don't care what printer it is, print a few extra. When you're doing a large run of pieces like this, print a lot extra. You know, print an extra 10% if there is an issue like this. Now, Saul can just go back and reprint them, but I totally understand the, how the heck did this happen? Why is it only on a few of them? And I don't exactly know. This one is confusing me because it's all the same tool head. If it wasn't all the same tool head, we would see some sort of prime tower here for the heads. So this is a multi-tool head machine running in single tool head mode, and it shouldn't have these issues. I want to get to the bottom of this. It is not consistent. It is not on every part, and there is no apparent pattern to this. My Best advice here would be to go back to the raw G code and go line by line on the G code. And that is the bottom slider in Prusa Slicer and actually see what is causing this. And if all of those failures align with each other of like, okay, these are the last things that it printed on the plate, like the last few layers that it printed, then sure, I could see that it was misaligned for a few layers, but it appears it worked fine for most of it. It failed on second to last layer for some, and then the last layer for others. That's a confusing one, and it's got me left with more questions than answers. So, I don't know. Help me, internet. You're my only hope. And hey, while you're helping out, my name is Grant, and this is Print Fix Friday, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose. And if you do have issues like this and you want to get them looked at, you can do so by hitting us up on the social medias, although YouTube and Twitter are often the best places to find me. Of course, you can always join our Patreon Discord server at the $10 tier and higher on any of the places to support us so that we can help you get your printers printing properly. Next up, we have a Prusa Mark IV from Crazy Photon in our Discord as well, who survived his first blob of doom. This is a pretty rough one. It pushed out 
this silicone sock. Now we can see the crazy photon here has done some changes to the Mark IV. Definitely have new printed parts and a different fan duct from factory, as well as a, I guess it's an intake duct for the hot end cooling so that you're not applying any draft to the bill plate. I've never noticed that to be a problem myself, but hey, if you have, those are always good options. And being fully open source, you can upgrade these machines, you can change things, you can try things, and you're not going to hurt anything because, well, all the files are available for you to mess with. But we have a pretty serious blob of doom here. Not only did it encase the hot end, but it pushed out the heater sock, which we normally say, put heater socks on your printers because those silicone socks save hot ends except when they push out the sock and the sock can't do its job and your hot end still gets caked in what looks like a uh, very light colored peanut butter thankfully on the mark IV, it is just a couple of plugs and a couple of thumb screws and you can drop out that entire next router assembly and then you're able to to work on it from there. There is some value to this, right? Obviously the downside to a system like this is if you bend your heat break, it's a nozzle and heat break combination. The upside is it is crazy easy to just replace the entire unit as one. It's just very expensive. And if it's just a couple of connectors like we see here that go to a daughter board, it is very easy to drop it out with all of this peanut butter filament stuck to it and then heat it up Later, the best course of action here, what I would do is hold the next router in a pair of pliers. I would do it from the little copper cylinder that we see here because it's a thicker material and you're less likely to crush it, right? You want to hold it. You don't want to crush it. If you have some visible threads, you can grab onto those as well. And then get a blowtorch. Get that thing nice and hot. Obviously don't melt it. A little butane torch used for like creme brulee and things like that. Like a, a kitchen butane torch would be perfect for this to get the hot end a little bit warm so that you can use either an Allen key or a scraper of some sort to clean off that hot end. If you do want to try to save the silicone sock, you'll have to do something similar where you hold onto the sock, you heat up the filament until it gets soft, and then you can pull that big blob away. And then you can reuse that silicone sock, but just make sure both the hot end and the sock are clean. Now you might say, Grant, how the heck does this happen? Well, it happens when your first layer does not stick very well, and we can see actually some brim or skirt material here that, well, eventually failed to stick to the build plate and it just started getting all around that hot end. So it will start to cake around the hot end and if you get unlucky, it kind of goes up inside of the sock. It then pushes the sock off and you end up with this mess. This is all savable and should not cost Crazy Photon any money, just a little bit of time. But this is why we recommend having spares because you could easily just swap out the entire hot end, heat block, heater, thermistor, very quickly, really with no tools required, and take care of that issue later, get the spare put in, get a new sock put on, and then get the printer back to printing properly. And then when you get this all taken care of and cleaned up, you can put that back into inventory, into the rotation to be used when another failure occurs. Failure is part of 3D printing. And as we like to say around here, you want to fail fast and fail forward. You always want to learn from these mistakes. And to me, a mistake with a blob of doom that you can easily learn from is having spares around. So if you do keep spares, what spares do you keep? I want to get like a good comprehensive list together of all the spare parts that you should have for a basic 3d printer right like if you can get new rails and bearings keep a set of those in stock so when yours do eventually fail you don't have to worry about it things like nozzles heat blocks thermistors for sure heaters let me know what you guys keep in stock if you keep things up and if you don't keep a stock of spare parts i'd love to know why i can totally understand that if you live near a micro center which we now have one in florida and we went to it so if you want to see content from our trip to micro center let me know it feels very much like they paid us to go they didn't. In fact, I spent a lot of money while I was there. I'm excited about things and it often sounds like a sales pitch. So if you guys want to see that video, let me know. But I'll tell you, it does kind of sound a little sales pitchy. Really do like having a micro center. If you have one near you, you might be able to use their inventory as your inventory because well, you can just walk in and buy the spare parts that you need, assuming 
they carry the spare parts for your printer. Next up, we got a fail from the 3D printing subreddit saying, came home to this, not even mad. We got a Voron, it looks like a V0. Honestly, I'm not certain because I don't really know how to identify Vorons. I thought it might've initially been a salad fork, but a salad fork is a small trident and this is not a small trident. So I'm fairly certain that it is a V0, but it is irrelevant what Voron it is. It is relevant to what happened. The part came detached and the printer kept printing. And yeah, you know what? I totally agree. I wouldn't even be mad. This can happen when you have a pretty serious change in temperature. So if you had an air duct blowing onto your actual printer, it's like a air conditioning duct, right? Not fans. So we can see they've got some chamber cooling in here so they can print very fast as Vorons are known for. And I want to get mine printing fast. That's going to be coming up soon in our rotation of live streams. So if you do want to see that kind of thing, get subscribed because we're going to be tuning our Trident to move stupid fast. And I'm excited for it. But what can also cause this is when the machine knocks the part off itself. So because these Vorons move crazy fast, right? Core XY printers are known for moving very, very fast. If there happens to be something that is stuck to the print that sticks up enough or there's a curled edge. The machine can easily collide with it and break it off of the build plate. And, well, most of the time, the machine doesn't know that that's happened. And unless you have some sort of vision system inside of your printer, your machine doesn't know that it had this problem and it's just going to happily keep running the G-code because they're not sentient yet. But I would say, brother, that is some damn fine bridging, right? Yeah, there's a little bit of spaghetti, but look at how far away that part is, right? Most printers print in the middle of the build plate. That part is at least one part away from where the part should be. I know that's me saying part a lot, but that is pretty darn good bridging for just open free air bridging. Give it credit where it's due. But how can you stop this? One of the best ways to stop this is to add a brim. Because remember, a brim is attached to your hat, okay? But a skirt flows around you. Okay, that's the best way that I've always remembered it. Skirt goes around the part, brim is attached to the part. So if you're dealing with parts that are tall and have a chance for this to occur, putting on a brim is the best way to ensure that this doesn't happen. Whoa, Yankee with no brim! But if there was a failure of the heated bed or something like that, this can happen to anybody. Other than a little bit of loss of plastic and a loss of time, no harm to the printer here, so keep on printing on. Next up, Isun, what the heck are you doing? I've had numerous rolls with this exact problem. It is so annoying that I can't use the remaining filament because it's doused in this stupid glue. Isun or any representative of Isun, please fix this ASAP. If you or your loved ones have been affected by cardboard spools, you can reach out to them. No. If you have used cardboard spools, chances are you might have ran into this as well. For those who don't know, cardboard spools are glued together and that glue is often some sort of like a hot glue. Well, if the filament is stored in a somewhat high temp environment, that glue doesn't always set. And if the filament is put onto the spool before that glue is fully set, that last line or two of filament gets stuck in the glue and becomes unusable. We can see that when they're pulling the filament away from that glue, it is taking some of the cardboard with it, making it completely unprintable. Now, technically it might work fine. You could probably scrape that off with your fingernail, but I totally understand being upset by this. You paid for all the kilogram. You want to use the whole darn kilogram. I agree. This is one of those kind of trade-offs. Cardboard spools are more susceptible to this problem. I can't say that I've had it on any of the cardboard spools that we use here, but I know it is absolutely a possibility. And especially with the heat down here in Florida, if the filament is delivered and left outside for a couple of hours, it is absolutely possible that a low temperature melting hot glue could absolutely soften an ambient heat here in Florida. But cardboard spools were supposed to be the answer to getting rid of plastic spools, which are just generally a huge waste. But companies like Printed Solid have had such an issue sourcing their cardboard spools reliably from a manufacturer that they just went back to the plastic because it does work. You might say, but Grant, plastic spools end up in landfills and they can, and that is a problem. But I would bring you an argument. Pretty much everybody knows about Facebook Marketplace, the place where we go to lowball people on project cars. But you can also keep all of your plastic spools. That's what we do. 
every year we keep all of our plastic spools right up until the holidays and then we put them out on facebook marketplace and say free spools to wind your holiday lights your extension cords whatever it may be and people just come and get them at my mailbox i will put boxes of them out and they will be gone within a couple of days and sure every now and then we end up with a few extra but I could use them for my own extension cords and companies like Prusa's printables have done contests to utilize those old spools in some sort of way for organizing or what have you but I'd like to know from you guys what do you use your old spools for obviously with the cardboard spools you can break them up put them into trash bags and recycle them or you know if you're feeling a little pyro today you can take them and put them in a burn pit or whatever it's not technically the best but it's not gonna stop you from doing it and we all know it and of course if you're going to 3d printopia you can bring your plastic spools to greengate 3d who are doing a spool recycling program where they were bringing an entire Gaylord for you to put your spools in and then they reuse those spools for their own filament and if you got extra filament that you don't want polar filament is of course doing their filament exchange where you can bring a spool of filament and take one out of their bin as well and yes that means you can take filament that other people bring I guess at Rocky Mountain they had someone drop off a couple of rolls of Ultem which I missed and I was bummed about that because Ultem is some awesome material. But I'd love to know from you guys, what do you do with your leftover rolls? The ones that are empty or mostly empty? I'd love to know. Last but not least, my buddy Martin, who said, tried using old filament. It broke apart in the feed tube. And he said he had to remove the feed tube. But how to get the filament out is the fun part. I've had this happen and anyone that lives in a humid environment like myself and Martin have dealt with this before where the filament sits in the feed tube long enough that it breaks into a thousand little pieces and it becomes a bit of a particular challenge. So how do you deal with this? The best thing you can do is obviously keep your filament dry, but when you live in a swamp like I do, Somebody. that's not always an option. As you guys know, behind those curtains is well over 100 kilograms of open air filament. Keeping it all dry is not financially feasible. It makes more sense to dry it as I need it if it is a little bit damp. Obviously, when you're done with the print, take the filament out so it doesn't have this problem. But again, nobody really does that, so this problem can happen from time time to time. The best thing that you can do in a situation like this is to remove the Bowden tube from the machine, which he's already done. There's the inlet for the machine. And then you pull out whatever remnants that you can, and then you feed in another material to push out all those little bits. Those little bits tend to go flying, so I wish you nothing but the best of finding them, but it is absolutely possible. We've had this happen, especially on our three millimeter filament, where, yeah, it has a tendency to break into quite a few pieces, but I I just take the old filament out where I can and whatever's left, I just push out with the new filament that I want to load in. For something like the next router, you can't just feed it through the machine. You have to feed it out of an open Bowden tube. And yes, certainly removing the tube is a little bit easier. If you do fully remove the tube like this, you could put an air compressor nozzle at the end of it and just blow the pieces of plastic out. But then they are absolutely going all over your shop, garage, you know, print room, whatever it is. So if you're going to do that, do that into a trash can with a bag so it can capture all of the bits of plastic. There's really not a good way to reuse this stuff. If you wanted to melt it down and turn it into something else, you could. But as we've talked about, it's really difficult to recycle filament completely. But if you do want to see us look at doing some sort of recycling, whether it is with plastic bottles or things like that, let me know in those comments. And hey, while you're down there, don't forget to leave a like because it does help the channel grow and doesn't cost you a dime. And if you want to see something different with this series, let me know as well. We would obviously love to let the series mature and grow with what you guys want as well. I do want to give a huge thank you to all of our channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for what you all do in making these videos possible. Remember, if you do want to support the efforts that we do here, you can do so. Links are in that description. Support for as little as a dollar a month, blah, 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 blah. You all know the spiel at this point. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series now with over three years of weekly videos. And next to that, I guess Rocky Mountain's probably a good one to remind you of, and we will be at 3D Printopia, formerly East Coast Rep Rep Festival. So if you're going to be there, come say hi. And uh, I don't know, maybe we'll do like a meeting fans little bit in a video or something. That's all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Also, congrats, Martin, on the new job. Have a good one.